Hi everyone. Today we discuss the problem of emancipation of the serfs in the Russian Empire in 1861. The Russian Empire in the 50s of the 19th century was an absolute monarchy. Its ruler was Emperor Alexander II uh, and its uh, status of absolute monarchy uh, means that there was no elective body uh, which could uh, control or influence uh, the emperor decisions. There were many estates in Russia, nobility or aristocracy, Russian aristocracy, uh, who were landlords, state officials, military commanders, clergy, of the Russian Orthodox Church, first of all, but also of a Muslim state in some provinces of the Russian Empire, primarily in the Volga uh, region uh, and uh, in the Caucasus. City dwellers or townsfolk uh, also was an estate in the Russian Empire and peasantry. Uh, peasantry, uh, which form, formed the majority of all Russian population. Peasants paid taxes and were the main recruits for the Russian Imperial Army. The Russian Empire had an agrarian economy. Peasants worked in the villages and agrarian sector was basic for manpower, for income, uh, because uh, there was no other income in the Russian Empire. Uh, the first steps of industrial revolution in Russia uh, took place in the 30s and 40s of the 19th century. Uh, Russia faced several uh, factories uh, and uh, in 1860, uh, so, sorry, 51, uh, the first uh, railroad from St. Petersburg to Moscow was uh, built and open for public. The Crimean War was a great disaster for Russia. Russia was defeated. Uh, it was caused by its backwardness. Uh, Russian army um, turned not as effective, not modern as uh, the French and British armies were. Uh, so the famous uh, siege of Sebastopol um, was uh, an act of heroism of Russian soldiers, but at the same time, uh, it was no more than a very uh, heavy loss of uh, people and um, an evidence of Russian, Russian weakness as a military power, of course. This war, the Crimean War, uh, cost very many money for the Russian government and Therefore, there was a huge financial crisis in the 50s. There are some scenes from Russian life, uh, paintings of Pavel Fedotov, the new cavalier, Alexei Venisyanov in the bluffed field, and uh, the Age of Sebastopol by Franz Rubot, uh, which shows us a very serious struggle during this terrible Crimean war. Why the Russian government decided to emancipate the serfs? Peasants were serfs and belonged to Russian landlords, Russian landowners. Uh, since the 18th century, there were deep concerns about um, humanitarian issues. Uh, Catherine the Great, for example, wanted to emancipate the serfs, but 
she was afraid of serious, um, serious appraisal uh, from the uh, nobility, and she decided not to make serious steps in this direction. Uh, Alexander I, uh, who managed to um, win the war against Napoleon Bonaparte uh, in um, the beginning of the 19th century, who also wanted to liberate the serfs, but he also rejected this idea because he was afraid of uh, a coup, uh, a coup, potential coup against his powers, against him. Uh, he knew very well that the emperor uh, may be killed uh, because his father, uh, Paul I, was killed during a coup in uh, 1801. Uh, so uh, another son of Paul I, um, Nicholas I, uh, the Russian emperor who was a successor, the successor of uh, Alexander um, I, Nicholas I also, also decided not to uh, make serious steps uh, in the emancipation process. Uh, simply because uh, he also was afraid of serious, serious um, problems, serious coups uh, and intrigues against him. Uh, so humanity uh, was not the main cause of liberation. Uh, if uh, humanity uh, is the basic cause, uh, it should act uh, much more, much earlier. But we always see some concerns against against the emancipation. Uh, peasant revolts, uh, were they a real threat or were they a myth? A myth for our Russian government. Uh, first of all, the Russian government knew very well that during the 18th century, there was a great um, peasant rebellion uh, of Yemelian Pugachev. Um, this rebellion was very strong. Uh, it uh, took place in many uh, areas of uh, European part of Russia. So uh, it was a considerable threat for the Russian government in the 18th century. But uh, during the 19th century, uh, there were also present revolts um, and the Russian government uh, always remembered this uh, possibility, this um, challenge to its authority. Uh, at the same time, uh, peasant revolts uh, were not as uh, powerful, were not as huge as uh, Pugachev rebellion was. Uh, so uh, in the middle of the 19th century, uh, the peasant revolts uh, looked not so terrific, uh, at least if we analyze the data, the data of police reports. Uh, there was no sign of huge development in this particular direction. Economic or labor issues. Uh, they certainly could play a role in the emancipation. Uh, for example, uh, free labor is much more productive than um, coercive, compulsory labor. But um, one has to bear in mind that uh, serfs didn't obtain money for their work. Um, all their, uh, all their production, all production from the lands of uh, landowners um, was a pure, a pure profit for the landlords. Uh, so uh, landlords um, could live very well and um, the question of economic uh, profitability of serfdom uh, was not as important as, for example, uh, the issue of security. Uh, security was much more important. Personal security of landlords uh, who were afraid of potential um, murder uh, 
from the presence. Uh, so, there were very limited number of factories in Russia. Therefore, um, labor, uh, labor was not as important uh, as it may be imagined. Um, those who had a factory uh, could uh, attract uh, labor uh, to buy by buying uh, serfs to this particular factory. So these issues were not as important as some scholars imagine. A record system in the army and its faults is much more real uh, challenge for the Russian uh, government. Why? A record system uh, was limited. Uh, it's a certain percent of population who could be a soldier. Uh, no more. But armor uh, and military technique uh, in the middle of the 19th century was so effective that all professional recruit army uh, could be killed in the first months of war. This happened during the Crimean War and therefore the Russian government faced a challenge where they could find new army. We also remember about the financial crisis of the Russian Empire. The government needed money, more, much money, to cover all expenses of wars, of war, of the Crimean War. The need of a modern army also of importance. This modern army could be formed only due to universal military conscription. But universal military conscription is incompatible with serfdom. Uh, if uh, peasants turn soldiers, they form army and their revolt is much more dangerous than a revolt of any pure peasants who were not soldiers. So the Russian, the Russian government uh, aimed uh, to implement universal military conscription in the future, uh, to create a modern army, to overcome its financial crisis, and to emancipate serfs for this first important goals. Emancipation of serfs took place in 1861. Key documents, Emancipation Manifesto of Alexander II from 3rd of March, and regulations concerning peasants living serf dependence or a set of 17 legal acts which regulate the new status of peasants. These regulations are much more important than manifesto because these regulations prescribed new obligations, duties of the serfs, of former serfs. Now the serfs turned to full citizens. Formerly, 23 million peasants were liberated from the serfdom. The serfdom was abolished officially. Uh, these peasants obtained several rights. They obtained the right to marry without having to gain consent from their landlord, uh, right to own property, to own a business, uh, to buy land. But at the same time, all these peasants had to pay compulsory redemption fee, compulsory mortgage for 
49 years with 6% per year. This redemption fee was very, very high, simply because the land uh, up which peasant, peasants obtained um, during the reform had a very low income, now, low income and low price. Uh, this fee was much was much higher than land price. So even a peasant uh, sold his or her uh, plot plot of land. Uh, he or her could not uh, cover his fees, couldn't cover his budget. Um, he or she had no enough money. The state, frankly speaking, gave to landlords uh, and to presents many money as a credit, as a credit. And this uh, money had to be returned to the state for 49 years. Compulsory payments to the state were added to all traditional taxes of peasants. Peasants also were included into village communities. This membership was also compulsory. A peasant couldn't leave the community. The community was an institution which collect, collected taxes from all peasants. Before the emancipation, this obligation was on a landlord. The landlords collected taxes and transmitted them to the government. Now, now, the village community and its uh, elders uh, had to pay taxes for all members. And if a member left the community, community had to pay for this particular person. Therefore, this compulsory membership was very uh, huge burden for um, migration, for labor migration, for um, the development of free labor market in Russia. Uh, Loss of land was also of importance during the emancipation. Um, landlords gave to peasants less land than peasants had at their disposal before the emancipation. Therefore, um, peasants had to uh, lease um, this uh, land from their former landlords. Therefore, peasants remained at their, at their power. There are several effects of the emancipation of the serfs. Labor market began to form in Russia. Capitalism began its own development in Russia. Capitalist economy. But also there was a land issue, land issue, and um, a quarrel about who could possess land: peasants or landlords or nobility. Class struggle in the villages. Uh, rich peasants turned uh, village capitalists or kulaks in Russia. But in Russian, uh, but poor peasants turned to Russian proletariat, uh, and there was no ability to become uh, rich, become rich, uh, if a peasant was not rich during the emancipation. All burden of redemption fees, taxes, 
was so high that there was no chance to change this situation. Many peasants lack the rich, uh, the money and impoverishment of peasants, uh, of not all peasants, of course, but of many peasants, is one of the main effects of the emancipation. All these factors open the way to Russian revolutions of the early 20th century. If you have questions, please ask them in the commentaries. Thank you for your attention.